Live from Nashville, Tennessee, it's the three. With the Studio C Band. And here's your host, Laura Harris Smith. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura Harris Smith, and welcome to the three. Yeah. This is the only television show out there that looks at how the crazy current events shaping our world are actually shaping you, body, mind, and spirit. Do you know what I'm noticing in the world today? People are finally waking to the idea that they need more sleep. They're understanding the link between good health and good sleep hygiene, as some call it. It used to be that all you heard about was diet and exercise, diet and exercise, but now what we're realizing is that for optimum health, it has to be diet and exercise and sleep. Once upon a time, I was a shopping channel host on Shop at Home TV. Yes, I am that person who sold you things in the middle of the night which you did not need. I'm so very sorry. But <laughs> I did sell you quality products. One of my favorite shows to do were not the jewelry shows or the skincare shows, but the bedding shows. Because the only way you can sell a mattress and a pillow is to crawl up on the bed, get cozy, and sell the concept of sleep. Mark was there, Mark, one of our cameramen here today, he was there back at Shop at Home and he remembers with me the, the big jib camera arm that would come in overhead on me and look, I'd look up into it and I would say, you spend a third of your life in bed. Don't you owe it to yourself to make your bedroom a sanctuary and get the best night's sleep possible? And the phones would go wild or what they call hot. That's because nobody cares about how many inches tall a mattress is. They just want to know if it's gonna help them sleep better. We are all so sleep deprived. And you know, we have sleep debts racked up taller than 10 California Kings stacked end on end. Well, my guest today is also in the business of selling sleep. He is doing a phenomenal job, I might add. He invented my pillow in 2004 and now, more than 30 million pillows later, with 1,600 employees and all pillows made right here in the United States, the company is still breaking records. But what you don't know is the B story behind this success story. It's the reason this success doesn't go to his head. And it's the reason that he wears that big gold cross around his neck all the time. And it involves addiction and redemption. And it's not a story you're going to want to miss, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to my stage, Mike Lindell. to the three. I am very excited to tell everyone that just before coming on here, we made a decision. Mike and I made an executive decision together. This is part one of a part two interview. We're going to keep him around for a while because when, when I just spoke to you, really, literally <laughs> yeah, over lunch, right, right. you told me about so many things. No way we could cram it into one show. Uh, uh, right. So <laughs> thank, you for sh thank you for staying. Yeah, so now, I want to start at the very beginning. First of all, congratulations on the success of your empire. Thank you. Um, Thank you. But I want to start back where, honestly, it says in the commercials it started, which was in 2004. Mm -hmm. You invented my pillow. What was going on in your life? Well, the, um, I was uh, actually had a dream. I, well, first of all, if we go problem solution, I, I'll do a little, little <laughs> what you were talking about when you were introducing me. I had pillow companies and bedding companies would sell us all kinds of things that didn't work. Mm -hmm. My pillows would go flat, I'd use my arm, fold them, and have neck aches and headaches and all these things. And I thought, am I the only one out there that has these problems? Mm -hmm. And I would be on, uh, but I tried all these pillows all my life. And then one night I actually had a dream. And, and the dream was actually the logo, my pillow before the pillow. You're kidding. And I got up and I wrote wow. my pillow all over the house. and. And my daughter came upstairs. It's actually in one of the commercials. Yes, my daughter know, came upstairs. She's like nine or ten years old. She says, she looks in there. It like everywhere wrote my pillow. <laughs> all the different way you could connect the, the Y and the P. And Aww. she says, what are you doing? And, and I go, 
I'm going to invent this pill. It's going to be called my pill. And there were no mys back then, so right. it kind of sounded weird. And she she grabbed a glass of water. She goes, Dad, that's really random. And she went back downstairs. And then Aww. a few days later, all the kids, and then I was getting and then another dream of what the pillow, you know, maybe what it could do. I didn't know this part. And, and, um, and these dreams were right from God. I look wow. back and go, well, the kids would say to their mother, they go, you know, what is with this pillow thing? Because it go on for days, <laughs> then weeks, and they go, oh, it's just a phase. It'll pass. Right, the pillow phase. And then it was right across the street a few, a few months later, or a few years later. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. went from how many employees in the beginning? It was just you and your kids. Yeah, well, what we, we, we did if, is uh, we, it took about a year and a half. My one son and I, every day, he would get home from school, and we would try different things to go in a pillow, tear okay. different things, foams and beads and everything. Wow. And I'd say, come on, Darren. And, he, and I, I think he's told me... Uh, well, it was fun the first few days, but after that, <laughs> and we finally had the we had the pillow. It was one day. It was after 94 different things, I, you know, that I tried in there, and, and we, I said, well, let's do this, and we did it, and it worked. But then we had, didn't have a machine to make the the inside. And during that time, I'm telling my friends and family, I'm going to get a patent on a pillow, and and uh, wow. you know, and they're and they're laughing at me. Everyone was laughing. Really? Oh yeah, everybody laughed. And then the other half said, "If you come up with a pillow that does that, you let me know. I want one." <laughs> and uh, and then no, I um, I actually when it finally made the first prototype and I made these pillows and now we were dead broke, no money, wow. and but we had these like 300 pillows made. And I walked into a box store. I won't name the store, but uh, I've told their, talked to their CMO since. And they, uh, I said, how many pillows are, you know, I have the best pillow ever made. How many would you like? And I'm all excited. And the, uh, the guy literally looked at me and goes, I want to see your buyer. And he goes, you need to leave. And all, it was like, because well. I'm all passionate. He took it as this guy's a nutcase. <laughs> and uh, so we couldn't sell them anywhere. And we mortgaged our house. I know that year the, to get it. Someone said, Mike, why don't you do a kiosk? I said, how do you spell that? What is it? You know? <laughs> and uh, so I did this kiosk. But the one day I happened to be there and selling, and this guy came up and he said, do you have a business card? And I go, oh, yeah, I'm all out. And I wrote it on a piece of paper, <laughs> of a phone number, and gave it to him. And, and I actually, you've got to realize back then, this kiosk, I had color from, from another store, color crayons that made family-owned and operated. Oh, and, that's uh, funny. And uh, another sign. Well, it so, was. Yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, I made my own signs. It was just so, it looked like some, you know, very cheesy, you know. And, hey, uh, it worked. Whatever yeah, you did, it and, worked. And then it got to be February or January, and we, I, for the first time, I'm kind of, you know, I was scared. I'm going, how am I going to support family? I have no money. We had mortgaged our house for just to even to buy Christmas presents. Wow. and. And uh, the guy called that I gave that number to. Okay. And he said, this pillow created a miracle in my in life. He said, change my life. Are you the guy that invented it? And I said, yeah. And he goes, and that was the only guy I gave my number out to. <laughs> so if you look back now, it was a very much a divine appointment. Mm -hmm. And he says, I run the Minneapolis Home and Garden Show. Would you like a spot in there? And I said, sure. I didn't even, you know, home shows and fairs. Right. And I went into there. That show changed my advertising. I was going to sell them myself then, yep. you know, because they worked. And I went in there with the passion, and we sold out the Minnesota State Fair. I applied there, got in there, and everything that could happen, happened. And then you, <laughs> when you talk about, uh, you know, a lot of it was my own adversity, mm -hmm. you know, my own addictions we'll talk, mm -hmm, we can talk about mm -hmm. in a little bit. But, but it, was, uh, it was painful. People tried to take the company. Really? Um, um, they tried to take the manufacturing, shut it down so my pillow would never be made. And when was it patented? Were you that was in yet? 2005, and actually okay. someone came up to me in 2005, and they said at the fair and said, uh, "Mike, you, you know, you're this is never going to see big retail. You know, the cars that get 200 miles a gallon, you never, you never hear about that guy." Yeah. And I'm going, <laughs> "What do you mean?" I'm going, "I better get this patent so at least I can good make it you. myself." Yeah. You know. No, that's good. So. so then you had an undercurrent going on in your life at the same time. Oh yeah. And uh, this was, if we go back to 2004, the company was. Is being built, it's being built up until like the 2009 time, 2009. And those five years, the company was beginning to grow and experience success, but you personally were tanking. We're going to talk more about that yeah, yeah, after we come yeah, back from the break, okay? I'm here with Mike Lindell. Everybody, don't go away. More after the break. Welcome back to The Three. I'm Laura Harris-Smith, and I have on my sofa Mike Lindell. He is the president and CEO of MyPillow. And 
you know what? I've, a, I've actually talked him into staying for a part two. So I want to jump right into this because this is going to take a while. Mm -hmm. This is where God really, really hits the scene in your life. Tell us what happened in those early years of my pillow. Well, I was a cocaine addict from back to the, in the, you know, for a long time, 15, 20 years. And it had changed to crack cocaine in the early 2000s. And so when I, when I invented, people say that all the time, wait a minute, you invented my pillow in 2004 and five and you quit crack and everything in 2009. Mm -hmm. And they're going, that was a miracle in itself. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. So I actually had a, a parallel railroad track of trying to get my pillow, which was struggling just doing shows and home shows, fairs, and uh, and because uh, they wouldn't take us, no box stores, nobody would take us or take my pillow. And but when one thing was going on is I would do these shows, and obviously every addict out there knows addiction is hard work. It's hard to hide it. It's yeah. hard to keep going. So in crack, it's really hard. But we, mm -hmm. but I was able to do it because I just you know God, God carried me through that. I look back <laughs> now, but also. I would, wow. I would never break trust with the show promoters and stuff, and I wouldn't, obviously I wouldn't be doing it when I'd be doing the show. And I, was in, I loved helping people. That's always been my passion. So when people would come up at these shows, and they would go, they'd be talking to them, and the ones would come up that had my pillow would come up and go, this pillow changed my life. Wow. And I would like the story how it changed their yeah. life. The amazing testimony, it would be so dear to me, and it would just say, you know, I got to keep going in this. And I knew, even back then, God gave me the pillow for a platform of a much bigger thing of uh, and sure. i knew this i would get i would get this in dreams i would see these you know these things <laughs> in the future well here so during those five years a 20-year divorce i mean we had mm. all these things it was literally lights out in the spring of 2007 mm. where the lights were going out on our house uh we were losing everything we we're making the pillows in our living room we we're actually a magic marker i remember my wife at the time writing you know putting the magic marker and writing the, people's addresses and i'm in the other room going how are we going to get out of this we had people taking our company wow. doing everything our losing our house mm -hmm. we got this divorce and then i went heavy into the crack after that in 2000 uh there was always a string that we kept going and then people would come in and want to mm. sell the pillow themselves at these shows hmm. but then they would turn around trying to take the company take the company again the manufacturing was taken a machine i had invented to i had to invent to even make the pillows that was taken by a big manufacturer oh, that took, he says i can make them for you cheaper and he and he uh took it and they uh um, didn't keep their word. He Doesn't didn't keep his like. word. He tried to say, well, I'm going to charge you back this. I go, no, that's not what I want for customers. And, wow. and uh, anyway, got up to the 2008 is an interesting part of the story, the, the spring of 2008. Um, and I got to tell this part, which I haven't told you yet. Okay. It's in February. And I had been on this little, this public access station in my hometown, you know, Minneapolis and they, uh, um, I'm in a, I live in a suburb, and, and it was, she kept airing this, uh, this, it was a little interview, right? Mm -hmm. And they would put a number up there, so I would get the, I would get the calls, you know, to sell oh, them wow. the pill. And I would be, and I would, uh, it wasn't just sales, I wanted to fit them, I wanted to get them, you know, get them mm -hmm, sleeping, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd get maybe, <laughs> I'd be always like three in the morning, and I'd maybe get three, four calls, you know, in a week, or maybe ten calls a week. So anyway, this day in February <laughs> of that year, I get a phone call at six o'clock at night, and, and at this time, I'm all by myself. There's all these things when, that had happened. So I'm mm. all alone out in this uh, place that I had. And wow. they said, yeah, um, I don't, I, you're the guy on TV I seen. I said, yeah. They said, well, I'm not going to buy a pillow, but God told me to pray for you that there, something wow. you're doing is going to be so big to the, to the world. And, and, one uh, little intercessor, yeah. one so, little yeah. person. That's oh, who you it might it be. Gets, yeah. It magnifies on that. So then I go, <laughs> I go, okay, and I was open to that. And she's praying, and she was, this went on for about fifteen minutes, and she <laughs> says goodbye. I, and I have her name to this day. Wow. About an hour later, okay, this never happened before. Another lady calls up and says, "Yeah, um, I, I, you're the guy on TV. I seen you on Channel Three. She says, I don't. <laughs> God told me to call you and pray for you that what you're doing is very wow. important. This platform." Whatever this pillow is, whatever it's going to lead to, is really important. And yes. Can I pray with you? I'm going. Yeah. I mean, God strange things have happened yeah. to me. So many things <laughs> yeah. happened. I mean, I just took it as normal. Going sure. So we pray. <laughs> and now about uh, two in the morning, I get another call. It's happened four times that this guy calls. This is the this same is week? A guy. Same night. Okay. Oh my word. So same night at two in the morning. Now I'm still up doing cocaine. I'm going all of a sudden two o'clock. The phone rings and it's this guy and he goes. 
are you that guy on TV? And I said, yeah. He goes, well, I don't believe in God, but God keeps, I keep having this dream that God wants me to call you and say what you're doing is important. Now, I hope my dream stop and he slams the phone down. <laughs> oh I'm going, okay. And, and so, now, wow. so now the next caller is eight in the morning. And I just guessed, said, you don't want to buy a pillow, you want to pray. She goes, how did you, how did you know? You know? <laughs> so I sit there and we, and we pray. And, uh, and now I'm going, the same time now, you know, I would always stay up until I got, I could fix things. And things were okay. so bad in my life. Wow. All of a sudden, I'm up for two weeks. And three of my drug dealers, I'm in the, I'm living in, or I'm in the mini, middle of Minneapolis, the, the one of the worst parts. And they all show up and they go, you're going to bed and we're shutting you off. Everybody, you're not getting any drugs. Wow. And I said, what? I said, you guys know each other? And I'm going, you know, and they're going, you made us a promise. You told us someday you'll quit and you're going to come back and help us and help this addiction, all this, because I would always tell them that. Yeah. And, I, and it's, tr it's true. So I go out in the middle of the night and I, the one, once the one guy fell asleep to try and get drugs, nobody on the street would sell me any drugs. Yeah. And I come back defeated and he, one of them takes my phone. He goes, he goes, take, he goes, take here. He takes a picture of me when I was up 14 days. He goes, you're going to need this someday for your book. He says, now you go to sleep. <laughs> and, and, and that's the picture you're seeing on your screen. Yeah, There's more yeah. coming back in just a moment with Mike Lindell. Stay close. <laughs>
Is it born to be yeah. a Christian? Is it, born to be, is it born to be off drugs and a Christian, both? <laughs> and I'm going, and I'm hearing this. He goes, wow. Mike, and then he's telling me, he goes, he's the one that told me, he goes, you know how much work it is with your addiction? Wow. All of our, you know, some of the addicts are the best workers and best entrepreneurs and best, you know, people in the world, but they just have these wounds. But anyway, we talked for quite a <laughs> while, but I didn't quit that day, of course. You know, he left. That was yeah, just yeah. another, all these seeds that were planted. Well, then it was January 16, 2009, mm -hmm. and I knew instinctively by everything that that window was shutting it that was night shutting. it was like anybody out there the old-fashioned TVs they used to go down to a little tiny blue dot okay, and yeah. we'd sit there as a kid and we'd turn it back on right. and they'd come back to oh life God, yeah. and and I knew that dot was it was going out you know, and and I said Lord I said I prayed and I said all right here's the deal I said I'm praying please if you free me of these not the desire for the drugs mm -hmm. you know I'll do this platform. I'm all yours, you know. And wow. and and of course, I did finish that night, whatever. And I, but I woke up the next day, and I'm expecting this. Just oh, it's going to be, you know, yeah. terrible. And I didn't have any desire at all. Yeah. And then I'm going. And at that point, there was nothing left. The the company was taken. They, I mean, mm -hmm. they would, they had. Uh, all my shows were taken. Mm -hmm. All these things were taken. Even my to, my to get my fabric where I had credit before, now I had no credit all of a mm. sudden because they were in on it. And yeah. they, and I had to come up, this is a real short strip, but I had to come up with $30,000. I'm going, okay, God, uh, I needed it by this following Friday. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I couldn't talk to two people in the same room, and I'm right out of right out of addiction, and people with suits scared me anyway. <laughs> and this guy goes, a friend of mine goes, well, you can go meet these guys. They're uh, um, Or actually, this was acquaintance. He said, well, you can go meet these guys. They're kind of mavericks or whatever. Right. And, Anyway, I went and met him. I need this thirty thousand dollars. I walk in there a week later. I'm a week out of addiction, and I walk in and I said, and I went in there with just a t-shirt on, and and I'm going, wow, there's all these C C I O C F O C E I O, and <laughs> uh, and I'm, but I'm not nervous. You know, I was, it was just, uh, there was no nervous, mm -hmm. and I walked in there with three jars of my patented foam and and a. Uh, and a pillow, and I start telling them, yeah, people have taken my company, and they're doing this, and I just, I used to be a crack cocaine addict, and I need $30,000, I'll pay you back $40,000 uh, within yeah. three months doing shows, and the guy goes, when did he quit crack? And I said, last Thursday. <laughs> and the, guy, the, guy goes, the guy goes, four of them got up and left the room, you know, and I'm wow. going, and the other four, I go, well, now there's four of you, you're all going to put in 7500 and and, uh, and, and all, did they? I needed it for yeah, and they did. Now get this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm going to do this because we've got to we've got to get on to episode two because yeah, we are yeah, running yeah, out of yeah. time. I want you to tell us in the next episode all about this infomercial because this is the point at which the investments came and all right, of that. Right. So, but first, you know, this show is called the three. Right. So we're typically having to have we we're supposed to have three people out here. Right. Um. So I kind of have to do that if you don't mind. I found sure. somebody. He's Absolutely. he's really quiet. He's just going to join us. He's going to stand here. Is that okay with yeah, you? Yeah, for all sure. All right. Let's bring him on out. Bring him on out. Yeah, here he is. This is this guy. I love this guy. <laughs> He's just going to kind of just, just put him over in my monologue spot over here. So I actually, I went to the MyPillow website, MyPillow.com. And if you want to go and have a stand-up mic, and you're, we'll call him Flat Mike. Flat Mike. You two can have a flat mic. Mike, thank you so much for joining oh, us. Man. We'll be back next time with part two of our interview with Mike Lindell. See you later, everybody. Tennessee. It's the three. With the Studio C band. And here's your host, Laura Harris Smith. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the three. I'm Laura Harris Smith. Last time on the three, did you notice we had an interview with the president and CEO and inventor of MyPillow, Mike Lindell. 
Well, he has graciously agreed to return to our stage for part two of our interview. Would you welcome Mike again, everybody? Mike Lindell. So we have had an interesting time trying to decide where to jump in because your life is like a movie. Um, but basically, you wound up, you came out of the addiction, but you just whispered to me a little while ago, even though you were, you know, in the middle of all of this uh, success with the pillow and everything, you still, you, after you got free from the addiction, you still were not a Christian. Right, right. It was, I, was, I wasn't walking with Jesus. It was like I was free to the, I learned this later on. I'm going, right. well, I'm free of all these addictions. I'm following what I knew. I knew what God wanted me to do. Right. And... And then, uh, but right, right out of that, after they had, you know, that I quit everything January 16, 2009, for the next year and a half, two years, through 2010 into 2011, I just doing home shows, fairs, and just <laughs> um, basically getting back everything that was taken and uh, that was, uh, that I had lost yeah. and trying to build up. So it was just sustaining. We probably had... Uh, my kids and uh, some friends, and we were doing, you know, doing these home shows all over the Midwest, mm -hmm. and and making the pillows at night, selling during the day. And, wow. uh, and uh, but it got to be this one, one thing. I we a print ad, or an, uh, actually an article in a newspaper came out, came mm -hmm. out about me in the Minneapolis Tribune on January second, two thousand eleven. It was just a human interest story, and here's a guy holding a pillow. <laughs> and it was, you know, just, and it came out in the business section. Wow. Well, I was in, I was actually in, uh, uh, with a friend of mine, then it was like six in the morning. And, and I was just telling about, it. I said, someday my phone, I had set it for an order. It would beep. I wow. said, someday my phone's going to be so busy. I'll have to turn it off for, and I'll, wow. at that moment in time, you hear beep, 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 beep. <laughs> and all these orders came in and I didn't know they were going to do this story I for see. sure. Yeah. And it just exploded that day. Well, uh, my kids were doing, they were in a mall doing a little show there, and the people were wrapped around the upper mall and all this. And I go, wow, people, they want what I've always wanted, what's real and wow. what's truthful. And so we, I, I told everyone with passion, I said, we're going to put, you know, we're going to make this infomercial, and we all put it in our pool, our money. We had no money. And friends, family, wow. my kids, everyone, you know, everybody, everybody put their you. money in. Well, we, we talked to a production person, and they go, oh, you need a movie star in there. You need this. And I'm going, okay, I really want to do it, just me and a friend and a real audience. And, <laughs> and uh, we ended up doing We filmed it in, in St. Paul, Minnesota. It was a real audience. It was just a friend of mine, and I had never been in front of a camera like that. I came <laughs> out in front of the audience, and I was... I had one line, and I, it took nine takes. They said, we can't use a teleprompter. <laughs> so they, there was no oh, teleprompter, goodness. and we just did it, and... It was. It aired October seventh, two thousand eleven. I was living in my sister's basement with nothing left, and it aired on the, on the at three o'clock in the morning, and it came over and it was just like, wow, this is what you know. It was just. It felt divine. Yeah. Well, within forty days, <laughs> when we just had five employees, or within forty days, we had five hundred. Man. By the what a story. by the next. By J December 26th or 7th of that, we're the biggest infomercial in the world. I mean, it was just because everybody, I mean, I was hiring people off the streets going, everybody knew, you know, I yeah. used to have these, yeah. have these bars and, and, and uh, everybody knew me from that. And I knew who was addicted, who wasn't. I'm going, okay, you're coming on. But, yeah. I, you know, the guy goes, uh, this guy named Mark and Luke, I said, those are good names in the Bible. You're hired. <laughs> right. We didn't have a, they go, Mike, we need to have an HR department. I go, that sounds horrible. And they go, they go, you need to be CEO. And I go, don't they just take the money? You know, I, I mean, that's all small. I just wanted to make pillows and get it out wow. there. And, and we got so big so fast. And all of a sudden, when the dust cleared in May of 2012, we had took in millions upon millions of dollars, but we we were millions in the hole. We don't yeah, use a bank. Right. We had nobody using a bank. And I'm going, what did I do wrong? And I'm going, and, but then the box stores came calling us, okay. you know. So anyway, we survived. In, but then I, I fell away. From, you know, I just, I got complacent, fell away from God. Mm -hmm. And in 13, and by, by, by the summer of 14, we were within two days of being gone again. I mean, that little dot. I mean, it's gone. Yeah. And I wasn't even doing any drugs. I mean, I was completely sober. I'm going, I go, okay, I, you know, what did I do wrong? Haven't and, we all done that, though? You know, I did what you said to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I do wrong? Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I just wanted, I was, you know, I prayed for a second chance because it was like, I, I knew what I had done and I and a, a second chance, I go, the pillow is gone. The, the half hour infomercial I got, when it ran now, it didn't take any money in and mm. it was just, it was over. And, and uh, but all of a sudden then I got one of my dreams and I told my board, we had a board then, we had a, we were a you know, real company then <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, and all these, and what I did then, I had this dream of where we were gonna be by the end of the year and money wise, and, and this is within two days of going under, and I'm saying, well, okay, to get there, you're basically building Noah's Ark and waiting for the rains to come. <laughs> and we're going, you know, how is this gonna happen? Right. We did it on faith. And so we, 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 you know, we had went from a garage to a, a bigger company to a, and then to this building. We bought this building and we drew it on uh, my son and I way back on our day on our deck. I wrote on a napkin, yeah, we're going to have quality control here on this piece of paper. And you could overlay the company and okay. it was amazing. You could wow. put that right over the top. So I, my friends and stuff, we just made this, you know, built this factory, uh, made it bigger. And in that fall of 14, we they said, Mike, we had made a, a one minute and two minute commercial that okay. had failed before. And Kim said, this gal in my company, she says, you need to be in the commercial. Oh my goodness, yes. And so I go, okay. So I went in, you know, I went in the commercial <laughs> and it just, every spot you see either either breaks even or, or makes money directly mm -hmm, to the mm -hmm. people. And so it just exploded. I mean, it just wow. exploded and exploded. God's favor was on yeah, you. Yeah, it was, yeah. and it was to get, and I see that now was to get where I'm at now. What happened was then in the summer, you know, this platform, it's, it is where I'm bringing, you know, I get to being as passionate about Jesus mm -hmm. as I am about mm -hmm. the pillow. And, <laughs> and to get to that far, you know, people got to know who you are. Yeah, I could say, I could go out do. the thing to, and so that was to get the, the, um, notoriety you know to get the mm -hmm. you know, you're not just buying sure. pillows but you're seeing this and we kept yeah. getting bigger and bigger and bigger and then the uh the summer of 2015 um we came you know we came out with uh, a couple other different commercials but we uh we made them where it was just real it was kind of like you know my son my one of my sons mm -hmm. you know making it on a machine and showing me sewing mm -hmm. just interesting story it wasn't just you know we spend a third of our life sleeping well right. everybody knows that <laughs> it's the other two-thirds your life affects of how it, does, you know, it affects how it. Effects, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. but we started doing that and then uh and then an interesting thing happened in the summer of 2015 as you know that's when the election cycle started yes yes and i and saw that's a whole other can of words hang, hang on, hang on. <laughs> this is what i didn't know about you is okay. that you have all of these prophetic dreams yeah, yeah. okay we got to go for a break everybody come right back we're going to find out what happened in mike's dream all right Everybody, I'm Laura Harris Smith. Welcome back to the Three. I'm sitting here with Mike Lindell, President and CEO and inventor of My Pillow, and he's just telling us more of his incredible story of how God saved his life, gave him this platform. You know that side of it with the pillows and all. But when we went to the break, he was telling us about you were telling us about a dream that you had, uh, and that sparked a whole new season of your life. What happened? Right. It was uh, it was June of 2015. It was two weeks after. Donald Trump announced his presidency, mm -hmm. and I had one of the dreams I had where it it happens, and it was a, uh, it was him, and I'm, it was him and I in a room in an office, <laughs> and meeting, and I'm going, okay, that I'm, I've never been po political, mm -hmm. I've never been anything, and but like I knew, you know, I knew the pillow was just a platform yes, for this did. bigger thing, and I'm going, well, how would this tie in? So anyway, I told that, I made it very. I told that to so many people, and even my board, because it's locked into your board minutes, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And we okay, yeah. uh, we made Jesus chairman of the board a long time ago. Wow. And, uh, but we, so I told him this. So everybody's, you know, they're going to go out. Well, this is going to happen. I mean, this is the stuff that happens so much. But and I'm going, well, what would it mean? And and as it got into the fall of 16, I ended up, or to the fall of 15, I ended up over, went over to Israel with um, a group, um, and uh, one of the guys there, you know, he, I, I asked him, you know, what's you know, a lot of stuff about politics because I didn't know anything. I didn't know one th I Really, I mean, nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> so I'm learning stuff and I'm going, you know, about different things. And uh, and at that point then, uh, by another, the divine appointment started happening to me. And here I get invited to the National Prayer Breakfast in yeah. 
Well, and what happened was I get two, two things the same month. One was my, the way I was running my company was almost like a help center, like mm -hmm. a ministry, like a, um, um, we don't have HR, typical HR. Mm -hmm. We have a, it's a help center. So we, but with my foundation <laughs> that I'd set up, we, you know, I had this idea for this foundation. Mm -hmm. We can talk about it a little bit later, mm -hmm. but yes. I, I started that then in January. But at the same time, I get this divine appointment. I end up going to the national prayer breakfast and I get there and I'm picked by 12 people to go pray with Ben Carson. Okay. Wow. So I'm in this room and I'm going, oh, this is surreal for me. What, you know, what am I doing? But like I say, nothing by this time in my life all the way through nothing. It was like living inside a movie all the time. <laughs> still is. It, it sounds still is. like it. And so I get in there and, and, uh, we're praying for the country and he was still in the election then. And, uh, and uh, we go, we go through that, and the guy says, "A couple of you in this room are gonna, you know, it's gonna change. It's gonna be so important to the mm -hmm. kingdom." And uh, you know, this guy would said this, mm -hmm. and and uh, anyway, so that happened. Well, then it gets further into the spring, and obviously, we all know that uh, Donald Trump kept getting closer, and then all of a sudden, Ben Carson dropped out, and then he, Donald Trump's the elect the mm -hmm. candidate. Mm -hmm. Well, then now my board, everyone's going everyone's seeing that you know, even by that Ben Carson, they we're thinking something's gonna happen. <laughs> Something's here. happening. So. I end up at the Republican convention, another divine appointment. I would never go there. You know, I mean, it was so I end up there and everybody's recognizing. But I ended up in Mr. Trump's section and I it was a piece about the people I'm meeting are going, wow, they're amazing. His family, the people around him, even wow. the Secret Service. I'm going, they're not like any other cops I dealt with. You know, they're not, they were nice. You know, I mean, not that all that cops, they were all good people. I got I got a quick tell a story about about a cop. <laughs> I got to interrupt that because I to backtrack. Okay. When we talk about our town cop, back when I used to do crack and stuff in 2008, mm -hmm. there was a time I had to get these papers to my brother, and I had a warrant out for my arrest. That uh, and uh, I had to come in from the inner city to bring these papers, and I said, and he had caught me bringing it, dropping to my brother, yeah. and he says, Mike, put them down, and I said, Larry, and his name's Larry, and uh, he says, I said, Larry. If this doesn't get to my brother, you're going to change millions of lives. I said, I don't know how, but it's going to change the wow. course of history. And I said, if you let him take them, I said, I said, uh, I promise next Tuesday in court, I'm going to be found innocent. If I don't, I promise I'll have cocaine on me <laughs> anytime goodness. you arrest me, you know. And he, and to this day, he didn't, you know, he, he let me do it, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I met him just last year. I hadn't seen him in six years. And he came up, he said, he? and he said, Mike, am I in your book? He said, remember, I did that. And, you know, wow. and I said, Larry, why did you do believe that? He goes, he goes, you were so passionate yeah. and he believable yeah. that I thought, well, what if, what if I'm wrong? You know, what if I do it? And what if it's true? You know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, wow. so that was just an amazing story that will be in my book. Because Larry goes, I said, yeah, you can be in the book. You know, Well, yeah, and I, I'm curious. I'm watching from the outside. You're living your life. And I'm watching just even on social media. I mm -hmm. see just about every other day. You know, Mike Lindell has checked in at JFK Airport. Mike mm -hmm. Lindell right, has checked right. in at the White House. Mike Lindell has checked in at the West Wing. Right, right, I mean, you yeah, know, it's like right. on and on and on. You're right. somewhere every day. Travel 300 days a year. Yeah, you it's must, fun. Do it's you? fun. I love what I'm doing. I love just well, spreading the, you know. It definitely but does. So, so we're up to the Republican convention, right. and I go to leave there. And now remember, I still had that dream. I'm going to meet the president. Yeah. I'm going to have, you know, or, the, or Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And and I'm still thinking why, you know, and, uh, and, and, uh, well, at, when we had prayed, and when we had prayed with Ben, when I prayed with Ben Carson, we said, "This, you know, this country, God's given us a second chance." Okay, mm -hmm, and he, mm -hmm. we talked about all this stuff, and or He will. We were praying for a second yeah, chance at that him. time. So anyway, and the, after the public convention, I go to leave, and I run into Rudy Giuliani, <laughs> and, and we're talking and whatever. I'm meeting him, and I miss my plane. Okay, so I get I have to get on another plane. And I go to get on that plane, and on that plane, I hear Mike, um, um, and it was Candy Carson. And she goes, <laughs> she goes, you have something. He goes, you need to take my, we knew you were going to be on this plane. We, we prayed two weeks ago, and we both wow. got in prayer. You were going to be here. So we switched seats, and Ben and I started talking and for the next hour and a half. And there it was. And I'll, and I'll get to it the best. Oh, my <laughs> goodness yeah. gracious. Yes, I'm so glad that you, you've written a book. So we're going to find out more about that. We have one segment left, and I'm going to try to get everything into this seven minutes. So please come back right after the break.
Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I've got Mike Lindell on my sofa for just a few more minutes. So, so give us the rest of the story, okay. Mike. Come on. Okay, I'll go fast. So I saw so Ben Carson and I were on the plane. He goes, yeah, I got two weeks ago that you were going to be on this, you know, here and we, yeah. in prayer. So him and I talked about, and I said in, uh, we talked about um, he had dropped out of the race and to back down Mr. Trump. And anyway, after I got off there, I flew to Philadelphia. I'm away from Philadelphia to California. All of a sudden, I get an email in the uh, in the front seat, and it's from Donald Trump. He says, "Mike, would you could you meet me at the Trump wow. Tower? I, you know, you're um, <laughs> in uh, in New York City." So that got pushed off to August fifteenth. Um, 2016. You're, okay. But can I just stop and say yeah. that God has preserved your memory. You yeah. spit out about 10 dates. Yeah, in yeah, it's amazing <laughs> that know that the drugs didn't do Believe me, I'm going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, it, uh, they, uh, but so I walk in there and I've got these and I'm going, okay, my, you know, that dream is coming true yeah, now. Yeah. And I go into his office and, uh, and it is alone. It's him and I, I walk in there and he says, Mike, you always wear your cross. He says, are you a Christian? I said, yes, yes, Mr. Trump, this is a divine appointment. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what we talked about real quick, we talked about the inner cities. We talked about his heart where it was to help. Mm. And his, we talked about God for, you know, the, mm -hmm, we, we, mm -hmm. like right about the cross. And then, and all the things after meeting him and walking out, I go, wow. Now it was everything I prayed he would be. Mm. And I go, I would want no one else being my president other than mm. him. But I didn't stop there. I talked to his employees and stuff and everyone was like talking to my employees. Yeah, yeah. And so I went all in. People say I would never have went all in and, you know, and back to a product or anything if you consider a product. Right. But I went 100%. This is what God had me that meeting sure, for. Absolutely. I ended up at the second and third debate. I ended up in, <laughs> in the public eye for all this. Wow. I mean, and, and obviously, no, he gets a, he got elected. I was attacked then. We all know that sure. the spiritual warfare, all the stuff that happened mm -hmm. with, uh, which just made the fame go up. Yep, it did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how God works. <laughs> uh, a plus to an F. Anybody wants to know? And, uh, so it goes to um, you know, and then as it moves up now, and where it's at, you know, it's gotten to all the things that we talked about. Uh, this foundation I had, where a hundred percent of your money passes through to the need and you get to hear back mm. of a difference you made in their mm -hmm. life. I like mm -hmm. reverse engineer what a foundation was. It's ingenious. But, you know, and that's just the help. But the other part of it, I do speaking. I was doing speaking all the time and I'm going, you know what, Mike, what do we do for the opiate epidemic? And, and, uh, and this, cause it's so bad now. Yeah. Well, for me, if we've all talked about in the last episode, mm -hmm. when my friend came to me and I had to, I needed a mentor, yes. so to speak. Yes. And I told people, if you can't get, Everybody knows of the tragedies have happened, but everybody also knows of a success story. Right. <laughs> and you go, if you find them and, you know, you go and you bring the attic and you bring, plus you also the family, you bring them there and go, how did you do it? How did you get through it? And your answers are there. And you know what, when I was saying that, and, and then you might get there most of the time is to find out it's Jesus. Yeah. And the attic goes, no, I don't want any of that. Well, yeah. now he, it plants a seed and he's out there. Mm. And when he's down and out again, he goes, let me look back again. You know, mm. the, it's hope. Yep. And this thing we, that I have coming out to is going to connect the mentors with the addicts mm. and, and the families. And it's an app. It's an app. That's and when genius. this comes out, it's going to change the world. Yes. I have, you know, where you have where to go. You yep. know, you have yep. so many people have seen my story and heard by the way every everyone that was on crack back in my day yeah. they all followed suit Yay. every one of them has quit and uh these these successes you need to see that it, it, it's hope a lot uh, like i say all my friends that have yeah, quit hope is well, they, big. It, you know people tell, call me all the time they go you were my inspiration because i'm such out there in the public eye uh -huh. but you with this app can you imagine being connected yes. to your if you're a 22 year old kid and you're addicted to opiates mm -hmm. and you're going yeah you're in an aa group with uh 55 year old alcoholics right. so you can't relate right. you, they don't have the same problems they mm -hmm. don't have the same you know inner inner problems wow, we all believe me all addiction comes from wounds or trauma mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. it when you're child to follow us that's all these things mm -hmm, that go on mm -hmm. divorces every every all these different things that, mm -hmm. that happen those are what you're doing and people are good people that are yeah, addicts yeah. they're just doing it to for to mask the pain that's right. and that's it's right. so sad but if you have you need to show that we need to show hope mm -hmm. And and it's just show them hope and success. Yes. You know, all of a sudden you see now you see uh, um, all the stuff the president I ta had talked about. The president now mm -hmm. talked about with the inner city stuff. I want to say where we're starting with my foundation and stuff, and when we're starting there and we're going, okay, you give them hope, 
And then you see, wow, there's, you know, the addicts are seeing there's six, six yeah. people now. Now there's 10. Now there's 20. <laughs> it's the same way it got to there. We can bring it back in. And, yeah. and to show that and then to, uh, and then you can, all the other things can, can work, mm -hmm, you know, with mm -hmm. the jobs. You know, I mean, my, you know, when he did came, we talked about that too. He sure. goes, this is my model of how the jobs will be in the country to bring the jobs here. But Wouldn't that be you something? Know, and, and, well, let yeah. me ask you this. How, you mentioned to me, previously about a movie when is what is that well the movie see this was I mean, about gosh. this was my um um my friend stephen ball and we met in 2014 and i we were driving through um uh times square and i said i said stephen i said i didn't know that well i said stephen do you mind i said sometime <laughs> i could have i come to one of your movie sets i said i'm a um, I, I have a book that's going to come out, and it's going to help so many millions, but I want to make a movie from it. And God showed me this a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, I'll do you one better. Why don't we make a movie, brother, so you can learn the end of the thing. And yeah. it's called uh, Church People, and it's, uh, it was a, it's a Christian comedy we made. It's amazing. <laughs> a and comedy about was church fun. people. That and sounds I have a, interesting. And, I have, <laughs> and I, have a, I have a cameo in it, which, uh, they, uh, which uh, if I had time to tell a story, it's funny. I dropped the thing and blew it in front of 300 extras. You know, you, but, so what's but, the name of the movie again? Church People. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and that will be out when? Uh, that should be out right around the beginning of February. Okay, and yeah. then the book is called. No, what are the odds? And the, what, are, yeah, what yeah. are the odds? What and are the says, odds? What are the odds? It's and I'll say from crack addict to CEO. That's ingenious. And what I want to do with all those things for my money is all all that's going to go to my foundation. Of course. All of it. All every dime, even the cost. I you wouldn't know, expect anything less yeah. from you. And it's like that platform and. For me to help people, that's mm -hmm, always been my mm -hmm. passion. You can and tell then that. to just, uh, you know, to finally get the platform full circle to have as much passion yes, for Jesus as yes. the pillow. Oh, you know? That is so beautiful. <laughs> to help, that you know? is why I wanted yeah. to invite yeah. you on the yeah. show. Yeah. And I really just have one more order of business. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you just do one thing for me? Sure. Okay. Well, let's see it, guys. Can I have it? Yeah. I just wanted you to autograph my pillow for me. If you would. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it's L A U R A. <laughs> I'm your biggest fan. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and guess what, everybody? My pillow's for everybody. Yeah! Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Mike, thanks for being here. And guys, I just want to speak to you and say, if you are in the middle of a moment of addiction right now, or if it's just defining your life, there is freedom in Jesus Christ. Yes, All you have absolutely. to do is pray that prayer. Help me. And I guarantee you, he will, and your life will never be the same. Thanks, everybody. We'll Amen. see you next time on The Three. Thank you, Mike. Look at that. I can just leave